Hello everyone! Welcome back to another 2v2 battle. I am joined by a Chaos player, and we are fighting off against two different vampire counts. And so because we were facing off against two vampire counts, I brought the, um... I guess I'm gonna call this theme the Flames of Karaza Karak, which means it's gonna be a flame cannon and two iron drakes, just the normal iron drakes, because they spew flames. Uh, they're led by Grimgot Iron Brew, our generic dwarf lord here. We have two miners with blasting charges behind a line of dwarf warriors. We also have another miner group up there. We have three long beards, two of which are the ones with great weapons. We also have another dwarf warrior back here and two quarrelers. And I was worried about the Death Star build here. That's why I brought the Flames to try and have a bunch of AoE to bring it down. But neither of these players actually really went with the Death Star. There are, there are some Death Star components. We do have Cryptors. We do have Karen Race. But they're not mixed together, which I was kind of shocked. We also have some Black Knights from this player. We have Manfred. I believe it's Manfred on this. Yeah, this is Zombie's Dragon. Yep, that's him. We also have a Witch White King over there. Uh, there's, I think there's another White King over in this army as well with more Karen Race, some Grave Guard, a lot of skeletons. We have Manfred on a horse over here and a line of um, more Black Knights right there. And all the flanks, you have some Dire Wolves and there's the other White King. My ally was actually in the Archeon's Chosen video here. They went with the same, a similar build of Chosen with great weapons, four of them. Uh, instead of Archeon, they brought the Dragon Ogre uh, Kolek and a Giant of what's long as... Let me try that one again. As well as two Hell Cannons. So I guess they subbed out one of the Hell Cannons to try and grab a Giant and uh, Kolek. So that is our armies here. I moved up a little bit to try and get a better Come angle on. for our Flame Cannons. I still haven't really used them that much, so I... I need to use them some more. I think the flame cannons can potentially be kind of cool, but they are one of the shorter range of the uh, dwarven artillery, so that kind of makes them situational. But against two vampire counts, I thought maybe it would be okay. My ally is going to move into position next to me here, and the enemies, I guess, just going to try and figure out what to do. Um, we hold the advantage here with the two hell cannons. So, the, and also I'm a dwarf player, so there's no real reason to charge the enemy at this point. Because I know that they're going to come to us. We we have the Hell Cannons, which are now currently firing at Manfred on his Zombie Dragon. And both miss. Almost kind of hitting those can race behind him. There's some more puppies up here in the front. It's a lot of puppies. I don't really see Dire Wolves taken often. But they're going to wrap them around the flanks. zombie horde my ally then decided to shoot at the dire wolves they're very fast targets so I, I don't know if that's the best target for the hell cannons the other players dire wolf is at the corner of the map at this point I guess we can kind of fast forward a little bit here so the hell cannon keeps firing Nice hit on Manfred there. Uh, I'm not sure what this is about. Manfred cast, uh, what is this? Curse Winds or something? I don't know why. But this player does charge their Crypt Horrors up front. So they're going to get hit by some Corlers. And then they're going to get in range of our Flame Cannons. Now Crypt Horrors are susceptible to fire damage because of their regenerative uh, properties. And there go the Iron Drakes. They just look so cool. Just toasting those Crypt Horrors, but they're still charging forward. Zap charge going down. I'm trying to bring my other Iron Drakes to the side to toast the Crypt Horror line over here. There they come. Oh, it's beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, meanwhile, the Black Knights are going to hit the corner of my formation here, where we have some Dwarf Warriors waiting. So the thing is, the Dwarf Warriors... I always bring that up. Get off my screen. The Dwarf Warriors do have charge defense against large foes, as well as the Longbeards with the shields. The Longbeards with the long... Um, or the great weapons don't have charge defense. So even though I got slammed into by three different Black Knights here, the Dwarf Warriors didn't take a charge bonus or a charge penalty there because they have charge defense, which is why they're pretty useful. Um, so know that. 
They got a little toasty. More Satchels throwing down the dogs. And then exploding. A lot of damage. Meanwhile, on the right, the other Vampire Account players tried to flank us. And um, we have two Chosen here waiting for the skeletons to approach. Manfred over here is getting, getting shot by the Hell Cannon. The Cryptors have now been uh, mostly taken out at this point. Still getting roasted and hit by a giant here. And these Black Knights are not cycle charged out. They're not really shock cav, but still you should probably throw them out and cycle them around to get some eyes squishier bits if you can. We got some Karen Rays coming in now. Uh, I made a mistake here by keeping my Iron Drakes out in the front. So I was not micromanaging them well. Kolek dropping down some lightning. So four years to do pretty good against zombies, because I mean everything does well against zombies. Can race getting toasted. And there we go, the Cryptors have now been finished off, allowing these Chosen and the Giant to form a line with the other two Chosen over here. Because as you can see, the other Vampire Account player is coming in. Uh, Manfred von Karstein just got sniped out for good. So yeah, these Chosen against Skeletons, Chosen are gonna do pretty good, no matter what kind of Chosen you have. As is the uh, giant. Over here in my corner is still dealing with the Black Knights as well as the Karen Race and the Viking now. My leader Grim God is over here while I kept my Rune Priest on the other side to try and buff up our infantry fights over there. I was trying to get into position to support my ally at this point, so I'm having my Iron Tricks kind of exposed here. But I wanted to get a shot off on these Skeletal Spearmen, but unfortunately they actually kind of charge into it before my shots go off. Flame Cannon is still going off. We're shooting at some Grave Guard. The Flame Cannons are not exactly anti-armor, so shooting Grave Guard is not the best uh, target. But it was hard to sh like find a target because they were all obstructed by my own forces, so I shot at what I could. And you can see the Black Knights did not fare too well against the Dwarf Warriors over here so far. Uh, Grimgot is holding off an entire group of Cannon Race by himself because that's what the Iron Brews do. Meanwhile, like I said, my exposed Iron Drakes here are getting picked clean by Can Race and Skeletal Spearman. That was my mistake at leaving them out there. I, uh, I was going to try and assist my Alex. I just wanted to fire down these lines of Skeletal Warriors, but I put them out a little too far. And you can see, I think they are about... Yeah, they are currently routing that way. I did manage to get one group through, but they are now... I guess engaging in melee with the Black Knights. I'm trying to... I know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get them back here is what I'm currently trying to do in this game. Buffing up my troops with the um, runes from the Rune Priest. Rune of Negation right now. 44% damage resistance. But then the Curse of Years gets dropped on me. So they're now basically doing nothing. No damage. But they can still take a hit. I'm moving my group of Corlys over here to try and get some flanking shots on these Cairn Rays. While my Dwarves hold the line. They came back from routing. Grimgod still holding it on against these Karen Race. Even though they are anti-armor. Um, the Dwarf Lord has a pretty high defensive bonus. You may go over that later. Then over here, my allies. The four Chaos Chosen with great weapons and the Giant. Holding strong. They've been holding a long time fighting against these Skeletal Warriors. Then there are also Graveguard mixed in as well. But just holding this flank off. Showing you the power of some Chosen. Kolek has been surrounded for quite a while, so you can see that his health is dropping pretty quick. He's been fighting off, like, this entire area, Kolek has been holding off by himself. Uh, pretty impressive. Kolek is an impressive fighter and very expensive, too. Some more thunder from Kolek being dropped on these Graveguard. My Korolev is now fighting off some Skeletal Spearmen, which is a fight they should win, based on the stats alone. My flames came back from running, so I've been shooting some flamethrowers in the back of these Cairn Race, which is uh, pretty good. I got like three or four salvos off and then decided to move them over to, um, I think I want to shoot them back here. But it's at this point that the Cairn Race disengaged, and they're actually going to re-engage my Iron Drakes. And there's not much I can do. The Iron Drakes are pretty slow, so they're going to get caught. 
So I just try to get a shot off instead. But they are uh, slow reload time. We get one flame and then engage the melee. Rimfree's still alive. Still holding the line against this Karen race. Doing a pretty good job. And my allies, some of the warriors have finally broken some of the Chosen. We still do have an active Chosen over here. A Chosen that came back from routing and the Giant is still fighting as well. I'm trying to get my Corlers out of here and reinforce with some Dwarf Warriors to hold the line or hold this flank. Colette came back from routing, but my uh, ally didn't notice and neither did, did, did I or else I would have probably typed something. Uh, flame Cannons have not been able to fire through most of this engagement. Uh, but finally we do have a arc of fire on these Cannons who are way out here killing all my poor Iron Drakes. We have more buffs going down for my Runesmith, Rune of Oath and Steel and Negation. Those are the two defensive buffs that they have. I have also been dropping the Rune of um, Ruin, which is our offensive direct damage spell uh, here and there. Manfred and the White King are over here. And there's not too much left from my ally except for this Chaos Giant and this regrouped uh, group chosen. But they are still doing what they can. I was trying to engage their uh, Manfred with my uh, with Grimgot because he should be able to win that fight. Flame cannon shots going on down on this clump of infantry as our dwarf warriors continue to hold the line. Boiler's getting some shots in as well. He's done a pretty decent job at trying to protect these hell cannons. Well, at least one of them. Here comes the White King to back up Manfred. And here comes Grimgot, very bloodied at this point. I think I put him in the melee. There we go. I just did all of his buffs, including standing ground, and I throw him in there. And those two warriors, or those two leaders, decide to run. Probably a good, good call. They didn't want to fight a melee piss off Grimgot Iron Brew. But you can see we've cleaned up most of the other warriors around. It's a very bloody battlefield, but the dwarves and the chaos chosen are going to hold the line against the vampire numbers. What are you casting? Curse of Years? Aspect of the Dread Knight on the Skeletal Spearman. Okay. There is a Rune of Ruin, Wrath and Ruin, from our uh, Rune Freeze nearby. Direct damage spell. Not as powerful as like Fate of Buna or anything, but it's technically free it's just on a cooldown so i wouldn't expect go! it to be and there we go they have been wrapped up let's see we still had three of the four groups of chosen are technically still alive the giant was still alive one of the hell cannons was still alive and kolek was still alive again but i don't think my ally or, and nor me uh realized he was alive as well but uh, those chosen they held against the entire army most of them anyway i think the black knights for their opponent was sent over to try and bust the, my corner and maybe some of their dogs as well but most mostly those chosen held off the entire army let's look at the kills all right so blasting charges these miners got a, a lot of kills against the dire wolves and zombies they got some other satchel charges off against the crypt horrors which do some damage i think they got maybe a couple grave guard but for the most part those are dire wolves and zombie kills which is fine uh both of my heroes did pretty well grim got getting 46 kills and holding off an entire group of can race by himself and barely taking any damage which is really good uh dwarf warriors are pretty good they probably were fighting the uh zombies i would imagine and one of these were holding off the corner. I don't know which one. Probably this one because it's so damaged. But really good job for you. Longbeards did pretty well. This one racked up a ton of experience. The Corlers did pretty well again. And the Iron Drakes didn't, did not really get many kills. They shot a lot of fire. Now a lot of that fire was directed at Crypt Horrors. So you're not going to get many kills from them. But then a lot was also directed at the Cairn Race. And I'm kind of shocked that they didn't really get more. But our Flame Cannon got 103 kills. But some of those are also against zombies, so that's a little bit inflated. My enemy here, Manfred 48, the White King 23, both pretty respectable kills there. Graveguard did eh, fairly well. Hand race did fairly well. Direwolves eh, did fairly well. They're not a super strong unit skeletons. Eh. That's a lot of spearmen. That is a lot of spearmen. Holy crap. Yeah, the, this, this was actually the army that was thrown against the Chaos. And uh, this was not built to fight Chaos. Not, not really at all. These poor skeletal spearmen just got sacrificed to the, uh, the gods of chaos. And let's look at their numbers. Holy crap. 
Yep. When you throw a bunch of skeletons against some Chosen, they're going to have a fun time, including Kolek and the Giant. They all had a blast over there on the uh, right flank. Oh, my God. And then my direct opponent here, there are all those zombies. He still managed to eke out some kills, which is impressive. Uh, that Manfred got sniped out of the air, so didn't get a chance to do much. The White King did some. This Graveguard did really good amount of kills, 60 kills on my Dwarves. Uh, Black Knights... You know, considering they were mostly just thrown into a corner and left there for a long time, that's still pretty good. Because Black Knights are really cheap, and against the very defensive dwarves, I wouldn't even imagine they get that many. But no, that's pretty good. Uh, three groups of dire wolves, none of which managed to get much done, and these three cryptors were honestly kind of sent to die. If the um, opponent waited for the zombie line to clash with my line and then threw the cryptors in there to. Um, actually deal damage while the zombies around them were soaking up some damage they probably would have done amazing but these three were sent way ahead of the rest of the army and just sent to die so they were way underutilized if these three were attacking my dwarves like i said in the zombie lines this <clears throat> do i do i say that we may have lost i don't know i don't know if we would have lost but i would have lost a, at least a lot more than what i did but uh, anyway, let's go take a look at some of those flames. Here we go. Iron Drakes. A thousand gold. Missile damage of 124 total. The actual missile doesn't do much, but it's the explosive base damage that does the most damage of them. And they get four shots per volley. Reload time of 8.1 seconds. So not terrible. I just like them mostly, honestly, because they look really cool. Uh, the Flame Cannon, I don't know. They buffed it in the last patch to have a better firing arc, I believe, and maybe it's damage. I, I, don't, remember, I don't know if they did the damage. It's, um... Yeah, I, I still have to do more testing. Out of all the artillery and tools that the dwarves have here, uh, I just don't know if the Flame Cannon is honestly worth 1,500. It's only a range of 160, so it's actually outrange. Is it outranged by crossbows and bows? No, it just outranges the bows. I'm so used to playing the radius mod, which actually increases the range of all bows, but that's why I had to question that. But um, yeah, so it barely outranges bows. So it's a pretty short range, 1,500. It did get a lot of kills, but a lot of those were against zombies. I don't know. I I'll have to do some more testing. And then, of course, the generic Dwarf Lord. The reason why he wasn't dying is just because he has such a high melee defense against all units. Uh, charge defense against all, so that's pretty good. Melee expert, that's just shown in his stats here with a higher melee attack and defense weapon strength of 420 so it does really well against the unarmored targets i mean he, he can still kill some armored targets but you mostly want to send him against the more lightly armored foes like i don't know can race although they take an 80 percent damage reduction to all physical damage which is insane and of course they have a very high armor but uh they're i think they're a pretty solid lord for 1300 they're pretty solid now what i probably should have done I didn't think about this when I was playing it, but I probably should have brought Thorgrim Grudgebearer. Because I think the only time he's really acceptable to bring is against Vampire Counts because of his High King trait here. That makes them immune to psychology. And Vampire Counts have a lot of terror and fear. So your dwarves, at least around Thorgrim, would be immune to that. As well as getting magic damage so that you can just send him in the group of Karen Race. And he can uh, he could tear some, some wraiths up pretty quickly with the high attack and melee defense and the uh, just magic attacks in general besides that um we can take a look at kolek because kolek racked up a lot of kills and held the line by himself 2000 you get a very very angry being here now he does have very low armor 30 is very low he looks like he would be heavily armored but in reality he's not so just know that uh, going in, he does have a very high set of um, hit points. He does take missile resistance because of the scaly skin. I think it's 25. Yeah, he has 25% missile resistance. He is an anti-armor uh, damage dealer. Oh my god, 400. That's so high. Charge bonus of 65. This is, if you do not focus fire this this uh, being down, he will just destroy your lines. But he's very susceptible to... I mean, he does have the missile resistance, but he's still going to be susceptible to missiles. Um, besides that, you can try to cast some spells at him, I suppose. Like magic missiles, if you can. But you need to focus fire this guy down. Um, also, cannons would do pretty good against him, just because they're anti-large. At least most of the cannons are. But yeah, if you let this this uh, being into your lines, he's going to give you a very bad time. He also does come with fear and terror, as well as that uh, thunderbolt. And it doesn't use the uh, winds of 
uh, what is it called? Winds of Magic? That's just an ability that he has, so... Very solid. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the battle, everybody. I'll try out the flames again. For right now, I can't say if they're worth it, other than they just look really awesome to see a wall of flames just cover a unit. It just looks super cool. And uh, yeah, so anyway, hope you enjoyed, everybody. Have a good day.